guys, so uh, today I want to make a tutorial about arrays, and the uh, the first thing to say is I really like arrays, they're just fantastic. So basically, an array is like a, a grid that you can fill with either integers, just numbers basically, or text. So it's a bit like a spreadsheet, they can be 2D or 3D, I'm going to show how you can use arrays to do some neat things, and you can, you can use them for all sorts of stuff. Uh, firstly, I think... You may need to download the array type in the extension manager here. So there's the array object. It might have an install option like that. Boop, boop. And uh, you may have to install the arrays. Once they're there, it should appear under all objects as array. So you put that, OK. Put it down. And one thing about them is that if you run the frame here, they're not visible. So there's there's nothing to see about them exactly. They're just kind of notionally there. But uh, if you look at the properties of this array, what we'll see is that... Uh, where we go is the actual properties? Yeah, so uh, there's a couple of things to them. They're, they're simple in a way. You've got dimensions. I like to set the dimensions to one of everything because, uh, for one thing, the, <coughs> the arrays are going to resize to contain whatever you put in them. So if I write into cell 100, 100 or something, the array is going to resize to be 100 big in, in two dimensions just to contain what I've written in there. So they're, they're good about that. Uh, those types of arrays, so you've got text will let you write text into your array. Numbers can only contain integers. I'll, I'll prove that in a second. But so one thing I've done very often is I, I get my array, I get all excited and I start trying to write in numbers into it, but uh, I, I forgot to make it a number array. So if you want numbers, do remember to make it numbers. Uh, there's also base 1 means the, the top left cell is 1, 1, basically, and then having it off will make it base 0, where the top left one is 0, 0 instead. It's kind of up to you which you want to use, depending on what's more convenient for how you're doing things. I like the top cell to be 1-1, one, one, not really classic programming. And you can also make your arrays global to the whole application. I don't use that at all, really, because I, I have everything working in, in one level now in my game. Super Space Galaxy uses only one level, because I just found the, the global stuff is a bit iffy. I don't know. I don't like it. So that is the basics. So uh, now we've uh, had a look at that. I'm going to show some of the basics of writing into an array now. So if I go into the event editor, I've set it up so pressing escape is going to lead this little demo. And again, if you just run it as it is, I can press escape to quit out, but there's nothing really to see in there. So uh, a good thing to do is put your array into the debugger. So we do add object to debugger. This will let you see what's happening. So I'm going to drag the debugger window in here. There's the array, and it's got what the the dimensions of it. So far, it's one by one by one. Um, it's got. You can double click here to look at the values, and then we've got one. Yeah, one one, one one one. There contains a zero, and then everything else is just no data. I think it's not. It doesn't have anything for that stuff. And there you go. So what I want to do now is just do some of the basics. So we can write. And uh, yeah, make sure you do the right thing here as well. So you can write values in three two or well one, two or three dimensions. So a one dimensional array would be kind of like a list, or you can write strings, and it just depends on what type of array you've picked. Uh, you can also I don't tend to use these, but you can use these dimension indexes as well. So you can kind of change these and then use these. Let, let's try it. Let's just use this now. So we'll, uh, right, so y dimension, to, let's, let's make it 5, 4, and I presume the z dimension is going to be 1. Move right, right value to current position, let's say it's 100. I don't normally do it this way, but if you want to use these, you can use them, you can use integers or whatever you want. So what we should now find is that 5, 4, yeah, yeah, okay, that works the way I thought it did. So 5, 4 now contains 100 like we wanted. And uh, I also want to prove that uh, ClickTeam will let you input a decimal like that. If I do 0 0.5, 5, 4 in here will now contain 
I think zero, yeah. So it won't work, even though it'll let you input it, but they can't contain decimals. So if you wanted to save decimals, or show saving in a bit as well, you may have to multiply up your decimal numbers, save them as an integer, and then convert them back into something decimal afterwards. So I'll, I'll just show writing xy as well, so write value to xy. And this is something where you've got to be a bit careful inputting things, just because it's easy to get mixed up between what you're inputting. So let's, let's put 99 into 1, 1. And uh, I say, yeah, input this stuff carefully, because if you do it wrong, it can be a bit hard to find. I mean, as you can see from the debug tools here, there isn't really a native way of seeing the whole array written out to you. And if it's invisible, things can go wrong. So uh, just take your time asking for what you want in the arrays. And there it is, and there's your 99. Uh, I'll also do a quick show of adding something. So there isn't really a native way of adding, but if I read the value from 1, 1, and I say plus 1 to that, put that into 1, 1. So like I said, it's a bit confusing. It 1, 1 plus 1 to 1, 1. It, it's it's just very easy to kind of mix yourself up. And I'll, I'll change this so that when I press space, it will add 1 to this number. And now when I uh, go here, it's five space presses, and what we should have is five. And five more gets me ten, and then and one more gets me eleven, and there you go. And and you can use stuff like that to keep track of how many enemies you've killed, or, or save your ammunition, or your your character's health, or all sorts of things. So, uh, and also you could instead of writing to just a uh, let's let's write ninety nine again into there. Instead of, <laughs> instead of writing into just a straight x, y, you could write with a, let's say, a row to write in here, I think, a, a variable. And then you could have, uh, like a, what I have in Superspace Galaxy, is that I write dynamically into a different cell. So the fact that these cells are all interrelated, and you can kind of put an equation in there and decide where to write, can make it quite powerful. So this, this should be going, yeah, row to write in is currently 5, so this should be in 5, 1 that will be set to 99, and we should see that. Five. No? Am I not doing this right? Oh, sorry, yeah, spacebar. Spacebar, go, and then, yeah, now 5, 1 is 99, boom. So there you go, you can be quite dynamic about these things as well. So you can use the fact that they're interrelated onto this grid as a, a nice shortcut as well. Like I have a whole map system based around using arrays and the fact that it's all located like that. <laughs> Huzzah! So uh, one other little thing, there's a couple of options in here I haven't looked at. We've got clear array, which obviously erases what's in the array. I don't get to use that very often, but that's something. We've got loading and saving, which I will show in a second. Uh, you can destroy the arrays. Um, I should also mention the only way to really resize the arrays is to destroy them and recreate them. So they'll, they start off just resizing to contain whatever data you have. If you want to change that size back down, because it is possible to look at the size of the array and get variables out of that, you do have to destroy and recreate the, the array. There is no way to manage the size of the array directly, really. That's not much of a niggle from, for what I use them for, at least. And now we get to the really fun part. So if I set up a string here of save location, I say that's at path. So at path is a nice little formula that lets you uh, yeah, get the, the path that the app is running from. Let me say plus save dot dat like that. That should now, I'll put it in the debugger as well, that should now, when I run it, we can look at my active object here, we can see its strings, and we can see that the save location is defined as this, and we, we can call on this save location. Normally it's best to kind of have one variable to represent stuff like that. So now, let's say if I press S to save, let's set up a saving and loading kind of a thing. So if I press S, so save array, do that once, 
it's good to have a kind of set saving routine that you can call on with these loops. Uh, I think I've got some separate material already talking about fast loops, but uh, there'll be more to come, as you think. So you can set up a fast loop that says save array, and then saving the array can do the same routine every time, and you've got a consistent save, and you, you definitely want to have stuff like that. So now, it's what, files, save array to file. You can save with a selector. I normally like to just have it more kind of console game-ish. Uh, if I use an expression, I can then use the save location we specified earlier, and there you go, and that will save. All right, yeah, okay, right. Let's 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 change this up a bit just to make a, a meaningful test of our saving. So let's change one one plus one and write that into one one. So we're back to the, the spacebar game. If you press the spacebar, it will add one to one one and it will save what we're doing there. So, that is precisely 11 presses, I believe. Yep, 11 presses. So then if I press S, that will save, and uh, let's go to the folder where I know this is. Ta-da! Okay, so we've got save.dat here. Um, the, the extension on the file doesn't matter, I think, really, but I just gotta, let's open that, and, uh, you can see a bit of junk here. It's, I think it's got CNC array because this used to be a click and create array. I think it was introduced back in click and create, at least that's my theory. And then you've got a bit of stuff. I don't really understand how the stuff works, to be honest. But it, it, so long as it's there, right? And as you can see, you can just open the files. It saves this way. If you want security in your file data, you might have to look at that separately. But there you go, and you've got genuine saving, and it'll remember things. So then we need a load. So let's make a separate loop for load array. Load, do that once. And if we make a loop. Not that these actually loop, they're more like single routines. Then we uh, file load array from file. And we use this same location. This is where it's good to have your locations stored in kind of one place. You just draw on that same definitive place. And then you can even change where you're saving and loading from, right? It's, it's something I do in, in Super Space Galaxy. So, let's try this. So if I do three presses, save that. And then let's start again. So it'll have nothing in there. But if I load load. Yep, there we go, because okay, so it's got my three presses. So now if I press a whole bunch, save it, close, load again, we should have even more. 12 presses total, and now we've got kind of a, a running, I mean, it, it's the worst game in the world, you just press the space bar to score one point. But I think it illustrates how you can use this to save data, load data, get all the stuff back add to numbers, and then now you've got something kind of exciting. So these numbers could be a bunch of variables in the game. You could, for your saving routine, you could write in a bunch of variables into the array and then load them back out again on queue, and all of a sudden you've got this great continuity going across sessions, and there you go. Uh, I should mention another thing I've done for my game, which is that you, you might be thinking you could store all your integers or what have you in one array, and hey, why not just have one master array that contains everything? Well, one thing is about what kind of trigger you want for saving. So right now I'm just saving on command by pressing S, but what I have in my game is there's some data that you want to save in the game, right? When you get to a checkpoint or something, it saves what situation your ship is in. But other times, things like changing the volume of the music, changing the color of the UI, that's more kind of meta stuff that isn't part of the game. So I at least distinguish game data from what I call the, the meta data that's more part of the menus and things. And I have a separate array for each of those, so that this way you, you, it'll save your game stuff when you get to a checkpoint, but it'll also save your, your menus and things, the, the music volume and what have you, instantly as soon as you change the music volume. Because what I don't want is it to save your progress by changing the music volume or or not save what you've done in the menus until you get to a checkpoint or something. You know what I mean? You want to you want to separate those datas out. So it, it's good to know that in advance and think, oh, I need to have one array for the the game data and one for the the more kind of behind the scenes stuff. 
Uh, finally, this this should be fairly obvious to people who know how to use click team, but this is a tutorial. I've uh, I've made a new variable here called array read. I just want to quickly illustrate what you can do to read. Actually, no. Let's, let's make it so that when you press space, so one one. Let's set the array read to whatever is in one one. Right. So you read value from x y position one one. So now what I should see as I open the objects variables, there we go, I press space, and if I load, it should, uh, let's, anyway, yeah, there we go, so it's, it's reading from the array, fairly obvious, but just worth illustrating there, you can get the variables to fit the array again like that, and that's pretty much it. So as you can see, arrays are really powerful. You can store lots of data in them. They will take up more memory as they get bigger and stuff. But you can use them to store text. You can make maps out of them. You can use the fact that it's this nice convenient grid. And uh, they're really great. Uh, the only real disadvantage, I would say, to arrays that I care about is the fact that everything is just in this anonymous grid. And you can't really see what you're doing as well as you can with writing to these these named variables. So think about what your needs are, and if you want to have named variables where you can kind of see what you're doing more, or if you want to have this big grid that contains a bunch of variables. And uh, I will also show what I've got to get around this naming problem. And here it is. So this is my array map. So this is for Super Space Galaxy. There's almost spoilers in here. But whatever, we've got a bunch of tabs that represent different arrays, and this is the, the X and Y grid, basically. And some of these, I think, uh, yes, yeah, so we've got different enemy types, just I categorize them vaguely, but so long as they're all in their own cell, it's fine. And th this keeps track of what's in all these cells, because otherwise it can get really confusing. So don't, don't try and remember what's in your array. If you're saving very much at all in your array, unless it's like one or two things, I would start getting a proper spreadsheet open of what variables you're arranging here. Like I've got all these items and stuff, they can add up, and there you go. So just make it easy for yourself and keep track of things. And if you do that, you will have a smooth and lovely time saving data and putting it into these uh, array squares. So there you go.